both of our sessions will be recorded. Right, so today we'll be looking at uh, two sections, essentially, uh, two modules. Um, a portion of, first, a portion of gear drives, right? And then as well as, um, what is this? A, 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 uh, module 8, what is module 8? Bearings, right? So we're going to look at a portion of gear drives, right? So essentially the introductory of gear drives. And then after that, we'll look at um, bearings. But I felt it was necessary for us to first go through the introductory section of gear drives, right? Because it is essential um, in understanding bearings, right? Now, without any further ado, uh, yes. Right, did did you guys go to this handout? I sent you this document earlier this morning. Were you able to go to this head this 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 document? No. But I went through the through gears. Okay. Oh, that's fine. So everyone must make sure that they go through these documents, right? Um, it highlights the different uh, the different quantities, different um, terminologies we are going to be using under gear drives, right? Now I included the diagrams so that you can see what it is exactly they're referring to when, for instance, they are talking about the addendum, the dedendum, the clearance, and um, all of that, right? So make sure you go through this document, right, in understanding all of that, right? Right, so the one thing I'm going to highlight here is that under gear drives, right, we get gear drives um with different tooth profiles right now i've highlighted three tooth profiles here one of which is the 14.5 full depth system right the 20 degrees full depth uh, system as well as the 20 degrees stop system right now depending on the kind of textbook you are looking you are using right some textbooks right only look at or only use this tooth profile if you're using this tooth profile, right, under addendum, the addendum will be exactly equal to the module, right? The addendum will be equal to this year, so 1,157 times module. So this M, right, stands for module, right? Then the clearance for this tooth profile will be 0, 0,157 meters, right? The working depth will be equal to this, Hole depth equal to that, tooth thickness equal to this, right? And then some textbook, right, use the 20 degrees full depth system. Now, the 20 degrees full depth system is the one that is common, right, in SA basically, because even when looking at um, the module on bearings, right, even on bearings, the involute uh, pressure angle or the involute angle, right? or the tooth profile of the gears that we are looking at for bearings is one of 20 degrees full depth system, right? Hence, for gear drives, right, I'll be using this tooth profile, right? So the 20 degrees full depth system tooth profile, right? Hence, addendum will be equal to the module, the addendum will be equal to 1.25 times the module, the clearance will be equal to the 0 0.25 times module. The working depth will be equal to two times the module, right? And then the whole depth will be equal to the 2.25 times module. 
right? Now, regarding whole depth and working depth, right? That you can just clearly see from the diagram. Sir? Yes. Uh, afternoon, everyone. Just before you go any further, uh, going back to, to that uh, table that you, you displayed there, um, will a question exam specify which which one you're using? Is that 14.5 degrees or 20 degrees? Will it specify? The question um, specify. I'm asking because I okay because, because I checked on on my text. It, it is the, the 20 degrees, uh, but I bumped into a question in the question paper, and I saw 1.157, and I was not sure where did they get that. Only now that you've you've showed this data, now I know where they got that 1.157. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Please. Right. Uh, good question. So they never specify. Um, even when marking exams, we account for both this truth profile or this truth profile, right? But regarding how, regarding which truth, pro truth profile I use and why I use it, I use this one because even when we get to bearings, right, the pressure angle, right, the truth profile of the gears that we use in bearings is this one, right? So I figured. It's better we stick to just one tooth profile for both gear drives and bearings. You get what I'm saying? Right. Now, just make sure you familiarize yourself with this document, right? I don't want to go through what each of these terms uh, means. Right? That is pretty much straightforward, right? If you Look at the terminologies, right? In conjunction with the diagrams, it will pretty much just take care of itself, right? So the addendum, you will see, right, from the terminology, how I've defined it, right? It's going to be quite clear, even with the diagram itself, right? The whole depth, the working depth, it's all going to make sense. If you look at the terminology in conjunction with the diagrams, right? So that part, you are going to go through yourself, right? Now, some of these um, terminologies we are going to be frequently using, right? For instance, the pre circle diameter, right? For gear drives, we do not necessarily use diameter, right? But instead, we use what we refer to as the pre circle diameter, right? So the diameter for gears is essentially the PCD, right? PCD being the pre circle diameter, right? And the PCD is equal to M is for module times the number of teeth of the gears, right? So that will be frequently using. So that's one, right? And then we're going to say come across questions where they ask for what the addendum is, what the addendum, what the addendum is, right? Whole depth, whatever the case, right? So if and when we get to those questions, right, we will refer to uh, the terminologies, right? Because I sometimes forget some of these formulas, right? I only, I only know the the main ones basically. So the PCD, because that one we frequently we frequently use, right? The addendum is pretty straightforward. The addendum is exactly equal to the module, right? So for whichever um, for whichever tool profile you use, the addendum is the same, right? So it's equal to the module, right? So the addendum because we're using. The 20 degrees full depth system, right? That the tandem will be equal to 1,25 times module, right? And then as far as the clearance, um, the working depth, all of that will be based on the fact that we are using the two, the 20 degrees full depth uh, system to profile, right? So just make sure you go through this document, go through the terminologies in conjunction with the diagram so you can know which section they are referring to right it actually makes more sense if you look at the terminologies in conjunction with the diagram itself right now let us jump into this one here right so sensor distance so the sensor distance right the sensor distance between two meshing gears right so here we'll be looking at um gears that i mesh and gears that are fitted with the same shaft right so we'll be looking at two types of 
how should I put this? Uh, say gear systems, right? We'll be looking at simple gear drives as well as compound gear drives, right? Simple gear drives is where you have a system of gears and each gear involved is fitted with the same, is fitted with its own shaft, right? So for instance, if say we have two gears and they're meshing, right? One gear we regard as the pinion and the, say, the other gear we regard as the gear wheel. The smallest gear in the system, right? So say you just have, or you're considering just two gears, right? The system only has two gears. The smallest gear you regard as the pinion and the bigger gear you regard as the gear wheel, right? So you get um, simple gear trains and then you get compound gear trains. Simple gear trains, again, are one or, or is the one where you have a system of gears and each gear in the system is fitted with its own shaft. Right? So each gear is fitted with its individual shaft. And then a compound gear train is one where you have a system of gears and some of the gears in the system are fitted with the same shaft, right? Now, coming to the sensor distance part of things, right? A sensor distance is essentially the sensor distance between the shafts of the gears you are looking at, right? Or, yes, let me pull like that. Um, the sensor distance is the sensor distance between the centers of the shafts of the gears in mesh, right? So if you have gears in mesh, the sensor distance will be the distance between the centers of the shafts of the gears in mesh, right? So considering, um, considering what is this? How can I put this? Um, so you get essentially two types of meshing configurations, right? So you get gears that mesh with the outside true circumference, right? The outside true circumference being the PCD, right? So you get gears that mesh with the outside true circumference and you get gears that mesh, say one gear has gear, has, has, um, gear teeth ground onto it on the inside true circumference, right? So you get gears that mesh with the outside true circumference and you get gears where one gear, right? Say the biggest gear, right, has teeth ground onto the inside, right, of the gear, right, and then, and then let me see if I have, so yeah, there, there we go, right, so you get a meshing configuration where one of the gears, right, so the biggest gear has gear teeth ground onto it on the inside to circumference, right, and then the gear meshing with it, right, has teeth on the outside to circumference. Right, so the center distance, right, being the, the distance between the centers of the two shafts, right, of the gears in mesh, right, mathematically depends on the type of meshing configuration you are looking at, right. Now, for this meshing configuration, right, where you have gears meshing with the outside to circumference, the center distance, as you can imagine, would be the radius of the pinion, right, plus the radius of the gear wheel, right, hence the sensor distance. Now, the radius for gears, right, we essentially refer to as the PCD divided by two. As you know, the diameter is two times the radius, meaning that the radius is half the diameter, right? So the radius here is going to be half the PCD, right? Hence, when calculating the sensor distance, for this kind of configuration, right, it would be from here, right, from here to the, essentially to the PCD. So what happens is when gears are in mesh, right, where they meet here, right, they meet at essentially the PCD, right? So you would have the PCD, right, of this one, exactly aligning with the PCD of this one, right? So they meet essentially at the PCD where these gears touch here, they're essentially touching at the circumference or at the true circumference of each gear, right? Hence, from here to that true circumference is the radius of each of the gears, right? So from here 
All right, to get the sensor distance will be from the center to the true circumference of this gear, which essentially is the radius of this pinion. The radius of this pinion is half of the PCD of the pinion, right? Plus the radius of the bigger gear, right? So the radius of the bigger gear is essentially half the PCD of that gear, right? Hence here, as far as the sensor distance for this one, this gear has been named as gear A, this one is gear B. Hence you have half of PCD A plus half of PCD B, right? Now, this can be further simplified by using a formula for the uh, PCD, right? Now on your terminologies, when you get to pre-circuit diameter, the pre-circuit diameter as you see here is equal to the module times number of teeth, right? So simplifying this or further simplifying this by using the formula for the PCD, right? we then say the module times the number of teeth of the PCD A plus the module times the number of teeth of B, right? Obviously divide that by two, right? Now, the module for meshing gears is the same, right? So the module of this gear will be the same as the module of this gear, meaning you have a common factor here being the module, right? So if you take out the common factor being the module, essentially this is what you are left with. As the center distance will be equal to, hence we've taken out the module seeing that the module is the same for meshing gears. So you are left with the number of teeth plus the number of teeth of A plus the number of teeth of B that divided by two, right? So in calculating the center distance between meshing gears for this kind of configuration, right? So for um, gears meshing with the outside true circumference, right? You could either use its PCDs, right? Or if you don't necessarily have the PCD, but you've been given the module and you have the number of teeth of both gears, then you can simply use this here. Any questions so far? No. Okay, then let's carry on. Right. So that is how you would calculate the sensor distance for this kind of machine configuration. Now, when it gets to this kind of machine configuration, right? Right. Now, when you get to this one, you have the bigger gear. Now, for this kind of configuration, right, the gear with um, teeth ground onto the inside true circumference we refer to as the analyst. Right. It's also sometimes called the ring gear. Right. Now, regarding the sensor distance, right? The sensor distance will be the sensor from here to the center of this gear here, right? Right, the center, or from the center of the analyst to the center of um, essentially the pinion, right? Hence, I said the smallest gear in the system you always refer to as the pinion. So if you're only just looking at the analyst, Right, and the gear that it's meshing with, seeing that the analyst will always be the biggest one in the gear system, right, for this kind of configuration, that makes the gear that it, it is meshing with a pinion. Right, so to get the center distance, right, the center distance would be the center distance from, or the center from, the center of the analyst to the center of the, the pinion. Right now, if you think about this mathematically, if you want to calculate this sensor distance, it's going to be different from how we calculated right this one because of that configuration. But essentially, you follow the same concept, right? Seeing that this is the sensor distance, to get this sensor distance, right? You essentially say, remember where the gears mesh, right? Where they touch each other or where they come into contact, right? When they come into contact, they um they um they are true circumference, right? So the 
outside true circumference, right? They basically come into contact, right? Or they merge, if you will, right? So meaning that from here, right, to where the gears touch is essentially the radius, right? So the radius of this one will be from here to where the gears touch, right? And then the sensor distance of this one will be from its center to where this to where the gears touch, right? So to get this sensor distance, right? Again, using radiuses, it will be the radius of this one, which is from here to there, right? So half the PCD of the analysis. So this gear has been named uh, gear A, and the pinion has been named gear B, right? So essentially to get the sensor distance, it will be equal to the radius of gear A, right? So the radius of gear A is half the PCD of A, hence that's what you have here, right? So it will be this minus that, and this here is equal to what? The radius of the pinion. So essentially, the sensor distance for this kind of configuration would be equal to the radius of the analysis, so half the PCD of the analysis, right? Minus half the PCD of the pinion. Hence, we had the analysis is PCD A, so half of PCD A minus half of the pinion PCD, which is PCD B, right? And then, of course, because as you know, PCD is, mo is module times number of teeth, right? So further simplifying this into that, this is what you get. And then again, for meshing gears, right? So it doesn't really matter how the gears are meshing. If the gears are meshing, right, then their modules are the same, whether you have this kind of configuration or you have this kind of configuration, right? So it doesn't depend on the configuration, but on the fact that um, the gears are meshing. If gears are meshing, then their modules are the same. In fact, in order for the gears to mesh, their modules have to be the same, right? So hence here again, you have a common factor of modules. So you take out the common factor of modules and then you subtract the number of teeth, right? So essentially, to get the sensor distance for this configuration, you could either use PCDs using this formula, right? Or you could use uh, this formula if you if instead they've given you the module and the number of teeth instead of giving you the PCD, right? Right. Now, as I said, you get simple gear trains as well as uh, compound gear trains, right? Simple gear trains, um, as mentioned, are uh, ones where you have a system of gears and each of the gears is fitted with its own shaft, right? So that's the major difference between simple gear trains and compound gear trains, is that simple gear trains, it doesn't necessarily have um, anything to do with the number of gears, but um, whether or not the gears are fitted with its own shaft or some of the gears are fitted with the same shaft, right? So for a gear system, where each gear is fitted with its own shaft, we regard that as a simple gear drain. And for a gear system, where the system of gears, right, you find that some of the gears, right, are fitted with the same shaft, then that we regard as a compound gear drain, right? Now, meshing gears, right, for simple gear drains, Right, simple gear trains where each of the gears are fitted with, it, with its own shaft. Right, the only relationship we get in the only relationship we get as far as gears for simple gear trains is one of meshing gears. Right, so in simple gear trains, the only relationship we get is one of meshing gears. Right, so meshing gears have this following relationship, right? Now, if you have gears, say this is rotating in that direction and this is rotating in that direction, right? So when these gears meet, right? You're going to have a circumferential velocity, right? Which is in one direction. Right, based on how the gears are rotating, this gear, this gear is rotating 
in that direction. So this one is going clockwise, this one is going anti-clockwise. So that's one thing about meshing gears, right? If the gears are meshing with the outside true circumference, uh, so both gears have um, T, um, have teeth ground onto it on the outside true circumference, right? Then they tend to rotate in opposite directions, meaning that you have two gears, they're meshing with the outside true circumference. Hence, if this one is going clockwise, this one is going clockwise, then this one will definitely go anti-clockwise. But where the gears meet, right? Where the gears meet. Right, where the gears meet, they essentially go in one direction, right? Because if you think about it linearly, since both gears are going in this direction, when they meet here, they tend to go in the same direction, right? So they tend to go in the same linear direction, right? And in that linear direction, we get circumferential velocity. So that V, right, V is a circumferential velocity. Circumferential velocity, right? Which of course will be meters per second, right? That velocity we get, right? Tangent to both gears where the gears meet, right? Now the only again um, relationship we get is one of meshing gears, right? The um, what is this? The circumferential velocity of each gear is the same. So the circumferential velocity of this one is the same as the circumferential velocity of this one. Right. right, that is the only um, relationship we get for simple uh, gear traits, right? The gears are meshing, then their circumferential velocity will be the same, right? Now, circumferential velocity, right? Circumferential velocity in general is equal to, so V is equal to pi dn, right? This formula you should be familiar with. We did cover it in, um, and bell drives in both N2 and N3, right? But for gear drives, as mentioned, the diameter isn't simply called diameter, but it's the PCD, right? So for, for gears, right? For gears, for gears, V is equal to pi, and then the D is the PCD times the gear's rotational frequency, right? So this stands for the PCD of the gear, and this stands for N stands for the rotational frequency of the gear, right? So this PCD, right? If this is the PCD of the pinion, this has to be the rotational frequency of the pinion. So this being the PCD, this will be its rotational frequency, right? So this has to correspond to that and vice versa, right? Now, as I mentioned, the relationship between two meshing gears for the meshing between two meshing the relationship between two meshing gears is one of the circumferential velocity. The circumferential velocity of the two meshing gears is the same, right? Now, for instance, now in this case, they said this is gear A and call this one gear B. Right? Now, we've established that the what is this? The relationship between these two gears is one of the circumferential velocity. Hence, VA is equal to VB, right? Now we've established that for years, instead of pi dn, we use pi times PCD times n, right? And then we also established that the PCD, right? If this is the PCD, then this is its um, corresponding rotational frequency, right? Hence, since this side represents A and this side represents B, this will be the PCD of A, and that's the PCD of um, A, not the PCD. This will be the PCD of A, and this will be the rotational frequency of A, right? And in this side, you have pi times PCD of B and its rotational frequency, so um, the rotational frequency of B, right? Now, mathematically, this cancels because it is the same, so essentially, you are left with PCD A times NA is equal to PCD B times NB, right? Then, as you know, by now, PCD is equal to the module times number of T, Right, so simplifying this further, right, and using the formula of the PCD, we say module times number of teeth of A times NA, we'll do the same thing this side, right? 
The gears are meshing, hence the modules are the same. This module will cancel this one, right? And then you're essentially left with NATA is equal to NBTB, right? So essentially what you get from this is that if you have two gears and they are meshing, the relationship is one of circumferential velocity. So the circumferential velocity of the one gear is equal to the circumferential velocity of the mesh of the gear it is meshing with, right? And then mathematically, right, this here is essentially equal to NATA is equal to NBTB, right? So this here we can use, right? From this relationship, this is what we get, right? So I'm basically just showing you where this comes from, right? So you do not necessarily have to um, take these steps in order to get from the to, in order to get to this, right? Now you know that you can simply just use this, but now you know that this comes from this relationship, right? So now you can use this relationship in getting whichever uh, quantity you might be looking for, whether that's number of teeth or the rotation of frequency. So for instance, if you've been given the rotation of frequency and the number of teeth of A, and you've given and you've been given, say, the number of teeth of B, and you are looking for the rotation of frequency of B. So you can use this to calculate um, the one quantity that is missing, right? Now, as mentioned, N stands for the rotation of frequency of the gear, right? That has to be in revs per second. So if you've been given in revs per minute, Right, that you convert to revs per second. Right, so as you know, there are 60 seconds in a minute. So to convert from RPMs, RPMs is revs per minute, you simply divide by 60. Right, to convert from revs per minute to revs per second. Right, now this small letter T refers to the number of teeth of the gear. Right, the reason why we use or I use the small letter T here is so as to differentiate between the number of teeth and torque, right? So the number of teeth we denote as small letter T and then torque or for torque, right? So for torque, I'm referring to this torque here, right? So for torque, right? So torque will be denoted as capital letter T. That is how we will differentiate between number of teeth and torque. Are we clear? Yes. Right. Right. So for simple gear trains, that's the only relationship we get, right? One of the circumferential velocity, right? So the circumferential velocity for meshing gears is the same, right? That is the only relationship we are able to get from simple gear trains. And then we get compound gear trains. As mentioned, compound gear trains are ones where you have a system of gears and some of the gears are fitted with the same shaft or even just, or, or, or even maybe just two gears are fitted with the same shaft. As long as some gears in the system are fitted with the same shaft, or it doesn't matter how many pairings that is, as it could be just one pairing as long as there is a pairing um, of gears uh, being fitted with the same shaft, then that makes that gear system or that gear train a compound gear train, right? Now, regarding the relationships we get for compound gear trains, right? So because with compound gear trains, so a compound gear train would uh, look like this one here. Right, so as you can see, you have one, two, three, four gears in the system, right? And then two of those gears is fitted with the same shaft. The fact that two of the gears, the fact that we just have one pairing where you have um, gears fitted with the same shaft, and that makes that system a compound gear train, right? Now, as you can see on the diagram, you have some gears that are meshing, and of course, you have, or of course, this being a compound gear system or gear train, you have some gears fitted with the same shaft, right? So this gear is fitted with the same shaft with this one. Now regarding relationships we get for compound uh, gear trains, right? 
the relationship we get or the relationships we get are based on the circumferential velocities of the meshing gears being the same. And then of course the other relationship we get is one of gears fitted with the same shaft. The gears fitted with the same shaft, right, essentially rotate at the same rotational frequency. Right. Now, if you look at our gears here, this gear has been named gear D. This one is gear C. This is gear B. And this one is gear A. Right. Now, if you look at gear C and B, right, they are fitted with the same shaft. Because they're fitted with the same shaft, it means they will rotate at the same rotational frequency. Whichever rotational frequency that this shaft is rotating at will be the rotational frequency of this gear as well as this gear. Right? So for compound gear planes, we get two relationships. So one of circumferential velocity, which we've already discussed, and one of um, the gears that are, that are fitted with the same shaft. Uh, so gears fitted with the same shaft rotate at the same rotational frequency. Right? Right. Now, let's talk about gear ratios, right? Now, gear ratios for gear systems or for gear drives, right? In fact, even for belt drive parts, let's stick to gear drives because we are looking at gear drives, right? Now, the gear ratio for gear drives. The gear ratio is the same as velocity ratio, the same as mechanical advantage, um, what else? What else can they use? Um, uh, 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 yeah, I think that's all, right? So the gear ratio can be referred to as being the velocity ratio as well. It, it also can be referred to as being the mechanical advantage of the gear system, right? So all of that is the gear ratio. So if they happen to ask you to calculate the mechanical advantage, you must know they are looking for the gear ratio. If they're asking you to calculate the velocity ratio, the velocity ratio is the gear ratio, right? Now, there is many ways we can express the gear ratio, right? The gear ratio can be expressed in terms of number of teeth. It can be expressed, in fact, there's one, the main way, how can I put this? So there's many different ways in which we can express the gear ratio. Right now, the main way to express the gear ratio is in terms of the rotational frequency of the gears. Right, so you simply say the rotational frequency of the input gear divided by the rotational frequency of the output gear. Right, so regarding input and output, or regard, regarding driver and driven. The driver gear we regard we regard as being the input, or we regard as being fitted with the input shaft, and then the output or the driven gear, right? The driven gear we regard as being the gear that is fitted with the output shaft, right? Because essentially, for the most part, right, gear systems are used, or let me say reduction gear, gear systems right reduction gear systems are used uh, are used to output as much torque as possible right so for a gear system to output as much torque as possible the output shaft needs to be fitted on the biggest gear in the system right the or between the input shaft and the output shaft, it would have to be the output shaft that has um, the biggest PCD or that has more number of teeth than the, than the one fitted with the input shaft. Right? The reason for that is very simple. As you know, torque is equal to force times radius. Right? Now, in this formula, this F here is essentially the applied force. That applied force, you will see when we do bearings, this applied force is actually called the tangential force, right? Or total force applied, right? So the total force applied in the in a gear system 
is the same for all gears, right? So the total force applied, so for there to be any kind of rotational motion or for there to be motion for the gears, it's this force that has to be applied, right? And that tangential force is the same for all the gears. So what really influences torque is the radius because it is the radius that is different from one gear to the next, right? So what really influences torque is the radius, right? So because of that, to get the most torque, this has to be big, right? So for instance, if this we take is the driver, right? As you can see, this has, or for us to be able to output more, uh, the most torque in this gear system, we would have to fit the input shaft into this gear and fit the output shaft into this gear, right? As you can see, this gear is relatively smaller than this one. Hence, to output the most torque, we would fit the output shaft onto this gear. Right? Do I, am I making sense here? Yes. All right. Right. Now, as I said, the gear ratio, mechanical advantage, velocity ratio can be expressed in a number of ways, right? Now, the main way to express the gear ratio is in terms of the uh, rotational frequency, right? The gear ratio is equal to the rotational frequency of the driver, the driver being the input of the driver being the gear that is fitted with the input shaft. Hence, we simply say N input or N in, right, divided by the rotational frequency of the driven gear or or, or 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 we can say the rotational frequency of the gear fitted with the output shaft right now the other ways in which we can express the gear ratio velocity ratio mechanical advantage right is essentially contingent on this relationship right because in terms of the rotational frequency, it's N input over N output. In terms of the other ways, so the other ways being in terms of uh, the PCD, in terms of number of teeth, in terms of torque, right? In terms of all the other ways, right? In terms of all the other ways, so the PCD, uh, number of teeth, torque, right? Seeing that, for the rotational frequency, it is N input over N output, right? Using the other quantities, right? So for PCD, the gear ratio would be PCD of out over PCD of in, right? Do I have this here? Okay, let me write this down now. Right, so in terms of uh, expressing the gear ratio in other ways, right? The gear ratio would be equal to so the main way is N in, right, divided by N out, right? But you can also express the gear ratio in terms of other quantities, one of which is the PCD, right? So in terms of the PCD, the gear ratio is PCD out over PCD in. In terms of number of teeth, it's number of teeth out divided by number of teeth in. in terms of torque, output torque divided by input torque, All right? Right, now as you can see here, right, the main way is in terms of the rotational frequency, right, the rotational frequency of the input over the rotational frequency of the output, right? And then the other ways, all of which are essentially out, right, over in. That is a very nice way of um, retaining it in your mind that the main one is the rotational frequency. Because of that, this will be N in over N out. And then the rest of the ways we can express the gear ratio will be whatever quantity that you choose to use or that is convenient to use. So whether it's PCD, number of teeth or torque, right? Using those quantities, it will be out over in, right? So this here is for 
let me let me make mention of that as well that this you use uh let's say this so this mm, yeah let me say this you use when looking at simple gear trades uh, so this or these relationships we use for simple gear trains, right? So this is for simple gear trains, right? And then for compound gear trains, right? As you can see, for compound gear trains, you have a number of gears, right? You have a number of gears. Right, so to get the gear ratio of this entire system, right? To get the gear ratio of this entire system, the way you would do it is, again, you have the main one, which is N in over N out, right? But now in terms of the PCD and in terms of the number of teeth, right? In terms of the PCD and in terms of the number of teeth, Right, the gear ratio will be equal to, so you still have N in divided by N out. But now in terms of uh, PCD and number of teeth, let me just think, um, we do not necessarily use the PCD here, not necessarily, right? We normally just use the number of teeth. So let me make mention of uh, the one for number of teeth, right? So for A, Compound gear plane, right? In terms of number of teeth, because you're essentially looking at um, a number of gears, right? The way you use number of teeth to get the gear ratio is by saying the product, right? The product of, say, T out divided by the product of T in, what that essentially means is, right? Now, you have a number of gears in the gear system, right? Now, this one has been fitted with the input shaft and this one has been fitted with the output shaft, right? So how you determine which other gears you consider as being out and which gears you consider as being fitted with the input shaft, right, essentially, is by looking at how the, the gears um, are essentially following each other, right? So just look at uh, which gear comes after the next, meaning the first gear you're looking at, right, um, say you come from this side, right? So you're looking at the input shaft. You're looking at the gear that is fitted with the input shaft, so the driver gear, right? Then all you do is you simply look at the gear that follows after that, right, in the system. The gear that follows is the one that meshes with the driver gear, which is this one, right? So if this is in, the gear that follows is going to be out. So this you label as being out, right? Which gear follows after this? The one that is the one that it is fitted with the same shaft with, so this gear. So if this one is out, the gear that follows is going to be the opposite, so in, right? And then, of course, the gear that follows this one is the one that it meshes with, hence, this one is out. So essentially, that is um, the, simple, the, the, the simplest way of labeling your gears as in and out, right? You first label the one that is the driver and then um, label the driven, right? And then as far as the other gears in the system, you just simply choose one gear as reference. It could either be the one fitted with the output shaft or the one fitted with the input shaft. And then just uh, look at how or look at which gears follow after that. But hence here we said this is the looking at or making reference to the, imp the one fitted with the imp input shaft. The one that it follows or the one that follows after it 
right? It's going to be opposite what it is. So this is in. So the this one will be out. The one that follows this one will be in. I think you get what I'm saying. Are we together? Yes. Right. That is the simplest way of doing it. Right. And then once you've labeled your gears, you are then able to calculate your gear ratio using number of teeth. So essentially, right, using this as an example, um, you have, so this is gear D, that's gear C, that's B, that's D, right? So using this diagram as an example, right, um, calculating the gear ratio for this problem, we would have, so this would be, and maybe I should have it somewhere close. Okay, let's write it here, right? So the gear ratio in terms of number of teeth, right, for this one or for this gear system, right, take into account that you're using number of teeth and this is a compound gear train, right? So for compound gear train, in terms of number of teeth, it's the product of number of teeth out divided by the product of number of teeth in. Right now, let's look at um, the number of teeth which you've labeled as out. Right, so you have a gear C and gear A. Right, so essentially, the product of that would be gear C times gear A. Right, so that is the product of T out over the product of T in. That's gear D and gear B. Right, so here you would have T D times T B, right? And this would give you your gear ratio, right? Do we understand how we use the number of teeth for if you're looking at a compound gear train? Yes, Hello? All right, now let's look at an example. Let's, let's look at an example. Mm. Let us look at an example. Mm. Say simple. Gear drives. Mm. Okay. Okay, let us look at activity 5.1. Hmm. <sighs> Mm. Uh, can everyone see this diagram? Can everyone see activity 5.1? Yes. Right. 
Um, we're going to do both problems. So we're going to do number one and number two. Then number three, you are going to do on your own. Let me see. Number two. Okay, yes. Yeah, we're going to do number one, number two. Then number three, you are going to do on your own. Right? Right, so let's first look at number one. Figure 5.12, uh, so this one. All right, it's the one written in China gear. Shows a pinion meshing with a gear. All right, so you have a pinion meshing with a ring gear. All right, hence I mentioned that sometimes this is, re is referred to as the analyst, and it's sometimes also referred to as being the ring gear. All right, so you have a ring gear and you have a pinion. Right, the pinion has 30 teeth. All right, so the pinion has 30 teeth. All right, so we're going to call this gear P and we're going to call the ring gear A for analysis. All right, the pinion has 30 teeth and a module of 1,5 millimeters. The sensor distance. Between the gears is 45 millimeters. Determine the pitch circle diameter of, of both gears. Right. So let's write down what we've been given here. Right. They said the number of teeth of the pinion. So that we're going to denote TP for pinion. The number of teeth of pinion of the pinion is 30 teeth. The module is 1,5. So M is 1,5 millimeters. All right, so the sensor distance, so C between the gears is 45 millimeters. 45 millimeters, determine the pitch circuit diameter of, the, of both gears. So we are looking for the PCD of the pinion as well as the PCD of the analyst, the ring gear. All right, now we've been given the number of teeth of the pinion as well as the module. Right? As you know by now, the module of meshing gears is the same. So if the module of the pinion is 1,5 millimeters, right, that means the module of the analyst or ring gear is also 1,5 millimeters. Right? So because we've been given enough information to get the PCD of the pinion, you can simply use the formula for calculating the PCD. Right? So meaning, PCD, the formula for PCD is equal to module times number of teeth. So because this is for the pinion, this will be the number of teeth of the pinion. You have the module and you have the number of teeth, right, for the pinion. So you simply just use that. This is 1,5. The number of teeth of the pinion is 30. So that's 30. And this gives us the PCD of the pinion, which is 45 millimeters, right? So if the PCD of the pinion is 45 millimeters, right, you obviously expect uh, the PCD of the analyst to be way bigger than this, right? So in calculating the PCD of the ring gear or analyst, if you happen to get anything less than 45, then you obviously made a mistake somewhere, right? Now, in calculating the PCD of the, what is this? The, 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 the PCD of the analyst, right? Now, they've given us the center distance between the two gears. It's 45 millimeters, right? Now, because of this configuration, right, this meshing configuration where you have one gear uh, having uh, teeth, on the inside pool circumference, and then one having number of teeth or having uh, teeth ground onto it on the outside true circumference. Right? So the sensor distance for such a configuration is, so the sensor distance here is equal to, uh, what is this? Half the PCD of the analysis. So the radius of the analysis, right? Minus half the PCD of the pinion, which is the radius of the pinion, 
I have to remember the sensor distance is this one here, right? So to get the sensor distance, the sensor distance will be equal to the radius of the analysis minus the radius of the pinion, right? That is where this, come, this uh, formula comes from, right? So from this formula, we've been given the sensor distance. We've just calculated the PCD of the PCD of the pinion. So this is the only unknown, right? So essentially here we have, this is equal to PCD of A minus the PCD of P, all of this divided by two, right? So making the PCD of the analyst, the subject of the formula, you have to cross multiply. So this times C, so when you cross multiply, you get PCD of A minus the PCD of the pinion is equal to two times C. And then to make PCD of A the subject, you simply transpose this one, that side. Therefore, the PCD of A will be equal to 2C plus the PCD of the pinion. Right. Now the sensor distance is equal to 45 millimeters. So that's 45 plus the PCD of the pinion, which is also 45. Right. Now we get 135 millimeters. Right. So the PCD of the ring gear is 135 millimeters and the PCD of the pinion is 45 millimeters. Right. As you can see, Right, the PCD of the pinion is much less than the PCD of the analysis. Right, it's actually three times less. Right, which makes sense. Any questions? <clears throat> uh, so on that one, the second part you um, calculated. Tell me, uh, can you use the formula, uh, sentence equals a module uh, T1 minus T2 divided by 2. Can you use that formula? Mm. C is equal to M into, so this would be T of analysis minus T of pinion. All of this divided by 2. This formula? Yes. So the answer is yes, but now the problem is you first have to calculate this here. So from this formula, you would get TA here. Then once you get TA, you would then use this formula in calculating uh, the PCD of A. It will take longer to do, but it will be, it will be correct. Okay. Any more questions? Should we go on to the next problem? Right. Yes, now sir. let us okay. Now let us look at number two here. Yes, let's look at number two. Figure five point one three. Right, so this figure, right, two gears in mesh, shows two gears in mesh, the module of gears, <coughs> shows two gears in mesh, the module of gears, the module of the gears is 5.5 millimeters, and the speed ratio is 3 to 1, right? The sensor distance between the gears is 700 millimeters, Calculate the pitch circuit diameter of both gears. Right. So again, we have to calculate the PCD of the gears. All right. So let us write down what we've been given. Mm Mm 
Okay. Oh, this is number two. So let's write down what you've been given. All right. <clears throat> we have two gears. So we have given us the module. We said the module of the gears is 5.5 millimeters. So we have M module, which is 5.5 millimeters. All right. The speed ratio, so the speed ratio is the same as velocity ratio, gear ratio, mechanical advantage, right? So essentially we have the gear ratio and it is three is to one. Right, so we have the gear ratio. The gear ratio is three is to one. Right, so the gear ratio, the sensor distance between the gears is 700 millimeters. All right, so they also gave us the sensor distance. So C is 700 millimeters. All right. <coughs> Calculate the pitch circle diameter. So we are looking for <coughs> the PCD. Now these gears have been named as A and B, right? So they're looking for the PCD of A and the PCD of B. Right, so the PCD of A as well as the PCD of B, right? Right, now, based on, on the information we've been given, right, we cannot get either of these PCDs using the formula for PCD because we do not have the number of teeth of either of the gears, right? Now let's see what we do have, right? You have two unknowns, right? If you have an unknown or if you have unknowns and they can't, if, and they cannot be solved using uh, the corresponding formula, then the two unknowns would need two equations, right? Which could be solved simultaneously, right? Now the two equations we have um, are one of the gear ratio and one of the sensor distance. Right, so we could use the formula for this and the formula for this, right? Two unknowns needs two equations of which we are going to have two equations, and then we can solve the two equations simultaneously, right? Now, as you know, the gear ratio can be expressed in a number of ways, can be expressed in terms of the rotation of frequency, can also be expressed in terms of the PCD, the number of teeth, and torque, right? So because we are looking for the PCD, we are going to express the gear ratio in terms of in, um, in terms of the PCD, right? Now, the gear ratio, the gear ratio in terms of the PCD is PCD out, right, divided by PCD in, right? Now here, they labeled our gears as A and B, right? So you simply just need to use your intuition here in determining which of these gears is gonna be fitted with the um, input shaft and which gear is gonna be fitted with the output shaft, right? Now, based on the fact that as far as gears, right, you have gear systems, right, in order to for the gear system to output the most torque, right? Now looking at gear B and gear A, right? The gear that would output the most torque between the two gears is gear A, why? Because remember, the only thing that really influences um, the magnitude of torque is the radius, because the force being applied is the same. The tangential force is the same, right? So based on that, it will be gear A that outputs the most, the most torque, right? Hence, we are going to fit, or we would fit the output shaft onto the gear A, and we would fit the input shaft onto gear B, right? So in terms of the gear ratio here, right, in terms of the gear ratio, right, we are saying 
this is in and this is out, all right? So in terms of the gear ratio, all right, taking into account that using the PCD is going to be PCD out and PCD out here, we've determined or we've established is going to be PCD A, so divided by PCD in, which is PCD B. Right, so our gear ratio looks like this one, All right? And then they've given us the value of the gear ratio. Uh, so essentially, PCD A over PCD B being equal to the gear ratio is equal to three to one. Three to one is the same as three divided by one. Three divided by one is the same as just three. All right, so essentially PCD A our PCDB is equal to three, right? And then solving for one year, you simply cross multiply, therefore meaning the PCDA will be equal to three times the PCD of B. And then you take this as the first equation, right? And then our second equation we are going to get by using the sensor distance, right? Based on the configuration of machine gears, the gears are, are meshing using or both using the outside true circumference. Because of that, the sensor distance right, of the gears will be equal to, in terms of the PCD, it will be the PCD, right, PCD of A, right, plus, uh, what is this, the PCD of B, all of this divided by two. All right, all of this divided by two. All right, and from this, we have the value of C. The sensor distance is equal to 700. I said 700 meters. I should have said 700 millimeters. So that's millimeters. All right, so the sensor distance is 700 millimeters. Right, so essentially you have the 700 millimeters, right, the PCD A plus the PCD of B, all of this divided by two. All right, so you cross multiply, and you cross multiply, you have PCD of A plus the PCD of B is equal to so when you cross multiply, it will be two times 700. Now two times 700 is 1400, All right? And this year, you take as your second equation. Two unknowns requires two equations, which we do have now. All right, so now you simply substitute the first equation into the second equation, All right? So sub one, into the second equation, All right? So now the second equation is PCDA plus PCDB is equal to 1,400. Now from the first equation, PCDA is equal to three times PCDB. So that is what we substitute here. So this will instead of PCDA, we will have three times PCDB plus PCDB is equal to is equal to 1,400, right? And then from this equation, you only have one unknown, so we solve for the one unknown, right? Three PCD B plus PCD B is equal to four PCD B. Right, is equal to 1,400. And then you make, or to get PCD B, we simply divide by four both sides. So PCD of B is equal to the 1,400 divided by four is 350. So this will be millimeters, right? And now to get the other PCD, you simply substitute PCD B here to get PCD A, right? So PCD A is equal to three times, is equal to three times PCD B. 
substituting that, this will be 350. Three times 350 is 1050 millimeters. And this is how you get your second of PCDA. Now, any questions regarding this one? Any questions? No. So everything is clear here. Right, good. So the two problems were based on uh, simple gear drives, right? Both the problems were based on simple gear drives. Now this one, you will do for homework, right? And then if you have problems, um, you can tell me over the WhatsApp group, All right? And out of 10 problems. For now though, since there are no questions regarding this, let us move on to a problem based on compound gear drains. We can do this one for more as well. Okay. And then mm. and do it again. Let me first add the other one for homework. Right. Now let us look at a problem based on compound gear systems. Right, so this reads as follows. The compound gear system of a reduction gearbox is shown in phase of 5.26. Right, so this is figure 5.26 as the compound gear system. Consists of an input gear A, right? So this here, maybe let us first finish reading this. 
It consists of an input gear A at 104th and rotating at 1000 reps per minute. An intermediate shaft on which two gears uh, B and C are mount, having 160 and 100 teeth respectively. And an output gear rotating at 260 reps per minute. If this system has a module of five millimeters, calculate these quantities, right? Now, we are looking at a compound gear train, right? So as you know, with a compound gear train, you have to label your, or you have to establish which gears you can take as in and which gears you take as out, right? Now they said that this consists of an input gear A, right? So that tells us that this here, gear A we take as being in, right? So meaning if that is in, the gear that follows, so gear B will be out. The gear that follows that is in, meaning this is gear we can take it out. Now they did say as much, right? They said gear A is rotating at 1000 reps per minute in an intermediate shaft on which two gears, B and C, right? So B and C are fitted with the same shaft, right? Uh, mount having 160 uh, and 100 teeth, respectively. So this is 160, or this has 160 teeth, and this has 100 teeth, and an output gear rotating. So this, as we've labeled, actually is the gear that is that is um, fitted with the output shaft, right? Or oh, and it is rotating at 2 260 reps per minute. If the system has a module, so the system has a module of five millimeters. So the machine gears have a module of five millimeters, right? That means that the module for these machine gears is the same as the module of these machine gears, right? At this level, the module is um, the same, right? But in N5, you definitely will be looking at cases where these machine gears have a module of their own or the module of this one Right, or the, the module of these machine gears will be different, right, from the module of these gears. Right, you are go, you are going to get cases like that, because remember the module is only the same for machine gears, right. So you don't just assume that the module of um, the gear system, the entire gear system, is five millimeters, unless they tell you that the module of the system is five millimeters, like they have on on this problem, right. So because that they said that the system or the module of the system is five, it means the module of these machine gears is five and the module of these machine gears is also five, right? Right, now let's look at questions. So this is in. Right, let's look at 4.1. Calculate the rotating speeds of uh, gears B and C, right? Now, gear gears B and C are fitted with the same shaft, right? So if you get the rotational frequency of B, you inadvertently get the rotational frequency of C and vice versa, right? So we are going to use... Um, whichever is convenient for us to use in order to get the rotational frequency of B and C, right? Now, based on our givens, right, we have all the information of this gear. So we have its rotational frequency as well as the number of teeth. Here, we only have the number of teeth, but we do not have the rotational frequency, right? Now, as you know, right, the relationship you have between machine gears is one of the circumferential velocity. The circumferential velocity of the machine gears is the same, right? Taking that into account, right? Looking at gear A and B, right? They are meshing, meaning that VA is equal to VB, right? Because VA is equal to VB, it means NA times TA is equal to NB times TB. Right now, based on what we've been given, this you have, this you have, this you have, this you don't have, but you can get it because you have all the other quantities. 
right? So to get NB, you simply divide both sides by TB, right? Simply divide both sides by TB, so that cancels. And therefore, this means that NB, right, is equal to NATA divided by TB. Right, now you simply substitute, right? NA is equal to 1,000 reps per minute. TA is equal to 104 teeth. So that's 104 divided by TB, right? The number of teeth of B is 160. So that's 160, right? And then punching this in your calculators, we get 650. So this is 650 revs per minute, right? Now this you could have had in revs per second or revs per minute, doesn't really matter for this case, right? So having, um, having the rotational frequency in revs per second, right, only matters if you have to calculate the circumferential velocity. As you know, velocity is equal to meters per second, right? So if you have to, or if you have a question asking you to calculate, say for instance, VA, as you know, VA will be equal to pi PCD of A times the rotational frequency of A, right? Now in that case, because V has to be in meters per second, only then do you need to convert this from revs per minute to revs per second. Right. Otherwise, if you're just looking for the rotational frequency, you could have it in just minutes or just per second. Doesn't really matter. Are we clear there? Yes. All right. So, getting the rotational frequency of B, right? B and C are fitted with the same shaft. So if you have the rotational frequency of this one, then you inadvertently have the rotational frequency of uh, C. So meaning that you can simply say, therefore, rotational frequency of C also equal to 650 revs per minute. Right? Open to the number of teeth of the output gear D. Right? So they want us to calculate the uh, rotation of frequency, uh, rotation of frequency, the number of teeth. So they want us to calculate the number of teeth of gear D, right? They want us to calculate the number of teeth of D, right? Now, there is a number of ways you can do this, right? But in the interest of um, having a look at what we've um, gone through today, Right, so the different methods uh, we can use in calculating our quantities, right? In the interest of that, we are going to use the formula for the gear ratio, right? To guess the number of teeth of D. Now, this is a compound gear system. This is 4.2. This is a compound gear system, right? Now, as we know, the gear ratio can be expressed in a number of ways, one of which is the rotational frequency, right? So N in, right, divided by N out. But instead of in and out, let us use right, the labels that they've given us, right? We know that this we take as in and this we take as out, right? So instead of in, we're going to say NA divided by ND, right? So in, is A out is D, All right? So NA over ND, which is the gear ratio in terms of the rotational frequency, is equal to the rotational frequency, not the rotational frequency, the gear ratio in terms of number of T. Right? Because you're looking at a compound gear system, remember, we are going to have the product of T out divided by the product of T in, right? So as far as T in, right, it's TB and TD, so this will be T, this will be T, B times T, D, right, so that is out, 
divided by the product of T in. In is T A times T C. Right? Now, based on this formula here, Right, we have the rotational frequency of the input and the rotational frequency of the output, and we have all the number of teeth except gear D. Right, so we have TB, we have TA, we have TC, we are only missing TD. Right, so solving for TD, right, in solving for TD, cross multiply, right, or let's say in solving for TD, TD will be equal to. Uh, TA times TC times NA divided by uh, TB times ND. Now you simply substitute, right? So look at what TA is equal to. TA is 104. So this will be 104. TC is 100 number of teeth. So that's 100, right? NA is 1000 revs per minute divided by TB. TB is 160. So that's 160. And then the rotational frequency of the output is 260 revs per minute. So that's 260, right? And then we get the value of the number of teeth of D. Right, so punching this in our calculators. We get, uh, so I am getting at 250. So 450, number of teeth. All right. Pretty straightforward. Now, had we gotten a number that is in decimal form, then you would have to do an approximation, right? Now, if the number after the decimal is is four or anything less than four, right? then you stick with the number before the comma and then if the number after the comma is five or greater than five then your approximation right you approximate to the next uh, what is this to the next unit so meaning if if we got say 250 comma four right then we would say 250 number of teeth but had we gotten 250 comma say six right then when rounding off we would say this is actually 251 number of teeth are we clear here? Right, now let us look at the next questions. All right, so next they want us to calculate the addendum right, of gear teeth. Now that the, the addendum, this is 4.3, right? The addendum is equal to the module, and the module here is what's the module equal to five millimeters. So the addendum is essentially five millimeters, right? Pretty straightforward. Remember this: you are going to see on that document I sent you this morning. All right, under technologies, you want to see what addendum is equal to. It's 4.4. Calculate the dedendum of the gear teeth. Right now, dedendum. Dedendum is equal to, I believe, one comma. Is it two five m? Let me just confirm you. Uh, Dedendum. Dedendum. Yes. So the dedendum is 1,25 times module. So we are right here. All right. So the M stands for the module. 
Right, so 1 comma 2 5 times the module, the module is 5. All right, so 1 comma 2 5 times 5 is 6 comma 2 5 millimeters. Um, take note um, for gear drives, we do not necessarily convert from millimeters to meters. Right, because all of our units are in millimeters, we leave everything in millimeters. Again, unless you have to calculate the, um, uh, the velocity. The velocity is in meters per second. So the PCD, you would have to convert to meters. And the rotational frequency, you would have to convert from revs per minute to revs per second. Right. Aside from that, everything else right, can be in millimeters. Everything can be left in millimeters. And the rotational frequency can be left in RPMs. Right. Uh, next, talk about the sensor distance X and sensor distance Y. Right. Now, don't be confused um, by how they've labeled X and Y. Right. The one thing you should know about the sensor distance the sensor distance will always be the sensor distance between the centers of the gears in mesh, right? So don't be confused by the fact that they have X and Y on one side, right? If you look at X, it's from here to there, right? Obviously, if you look at, this is the center of gear A, right? Gear A meshes with gear B, right? So if you have to calculate X, right, the sensor distance X, it's the center distance between the two meshing gears. So A and B, not A and C. Right, the sensor distance is the sensor distance between the centers of gears in mesh. If the gears are not meshing, that is no longer a sensor distance. Right, so the sensor distance X is the center from is the distance from the center of gear A and the center of gear B, right? So meaning with Y, Y is a sensor distance as well. A sensor distance is only a sensor distance or is only a distance between the centers of meshing gears. Right? So Y will be the center, the distance between the center of C and the center of D, right? So to get X, we use A and B. Uh, 4.5, what are you looking for? X. So to get X, right, X being the sensor distance, right, we use A and B. So this will be the module times TA plus TB divided by 2, right? The module they gave to us, it's 5. Right, TA, the number of teeth of A is 104. Right, so that's 104 plus the number of teeth of B is 160. Right, yes, 160 divided by 2. Right, and this gives us the sensor distance. So when you punch this in your calculators, mm, we are going to get. 660 right millimeters and then in calculating 4.6 4.6 the distance of y the sensor distance of y is between c and d right so we say to get y y is equal to the module into t c plus t d that's all of this divided by two. The module is still five. The number of teeth of C is 100. So this is one, 100 plus TD, we calculated and got 250. So that's 250. All of this divided by two, right? So now punching this in your calculators, we are going to get 875. 
So the lead is 875 millimeters, right? And that is how you would attempt such a problem. Right. Any questions? Hello. I, I think you you probably have more questions or yes. questions from us uh, on the next uh, uh, session. Uh, once we Sorry. start doing these calculations and then start somewhere. Then that's when we'll maybe come with with, with okay. questions. So I think don't be bothered. It's all quiet here. But uh, on right. my side, there's no question. Okay, cool. Got gotcha. you. All right. Um, if there are no questions for now, then we are done with this session. All right. Um, I thought I was going to start with bearings, but I fed you too much information for a session. So we are going to do bearings on Tuesday. Right, so we're going to do bearings on Tuesday. So for test two, it's going to be uh, module four. I will send you a, what is this thing called? Uh, 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 um, what is this thing called? But there is a document I will send you um, in which you will see which modules you, you have to prepare for test two. Right, but for test two, it will be, uh, module four, so the, the 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 two modules we had for test one, module four and module seven, right? Um, module four is precision measurement, so precision measurement, as well as uh, hydraulics, right? Under hydraulics, it will be what we covered, as well as Darcy's formula and. Um, Last week we covered, did we do, I think we did last Tuesday. Uh, did we do flow through an orifice? Yes, we did it. Yeah, so it's going to be precision measurement, uh, hydraulics up to flow through an orifice, um, gear drives, right, up to here, right, so simple and compound gears. Right, the second section under gear drives, we're going to do post eight week, right? And then bearings. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Uh, I was thinking I was going to include um, all these metal cutting machines, but I'm not going to include metal cutting machines, right? We will just uh, go through metal cutting machines after eight weeks, right? The most important thing is that you guys qualify, right? So I don't want to bombard you with a lot of work in a short space of time, right? So only those four modules for, uh, what is this, for eight weeks. After which we will then uh, do a lot of work in preparation for the exam. Right. We will be using that um, that handout I gave you, past exam questions. Right. After eight weeks, once you receive your marks for eight weeks as well, right, we will be preparing for, we'll be looking at problems, preparing for the exam essentially. Right, but for now, just focus on uh, doing, um, what is this? Test two. Test two, I will send tomorrow. So you'll have the whole week to work on it, essentially. And then I'll tell you when to submit. We'll discuss that uh, during the course of the week. But tomorrow, I'll be giving you um the test and then also by tuesday you will have received all your marks for test one and i will also have sent the memo okay. 
करेंगे सर एनी क्वेश्चन रिकॉर्डिंग इन द गूगल क्लास रूम if it's fine with you and in whatsapp some of us don't have whatsapp at the moment oh got you yes sure uh thank you for telling me um because i don't normally sometimes i forget to post in um, that thing um go classroom but i'll do so it's highly appreciated thank you sure any more questions um my question is not uh, part of this uh, module that we were doing i don't know i see there's couple of hands are, are still up so uh, there was a question uh, that was uh, sent to the group by uh one of us the one on hydraulics that was some work that you that got that you gave us on hydraulics yes and i did look at the memo i i don't agree uh, because i did say now i did post in the group to say that for me to say you, you follow the direction of the flow for you to say this one is p1 p1 maybe if you could assist that with that with that in, in our whatsapp group you know uh, that would be great i will Thank i will you. do the question and uh, i'll send it to the group yeah don't trust the one of the reasons why i didn't send the memos is because i myself don't trust the memos for um, past exam questions right i prefer to do the questions myself So I'll 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 do that question, and I'll send the solution. And then if there's still questions, I'll address those questions. That's right. Thank you, sir. Sure. Any more questions? All right. Beautiful. Um, let us meet again on Tuesday. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye. Sure. Bye. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Thank you, sir. On.